How wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to be discussing some of the more exciting discoveries from the microscopic world of quantum particles that potentially challenge some of the classical physics when it comes to second law of thermodynamics. And so even though in the classical world the universe has very specific laws and very specific rules, and when we build a certain machine, such as for example a heat engine, these rules determine how good the machine is and how much energy it can create with this rule actually known as the Carnot limit, and we're going to be discussing this in a few minutes, this law is based on classical physics, the physics of the macroscopic world, and the physics of the things we can see and touch. And as a side note, this law is the reason why no machine can be 100% efficient and always waste just a little bit of energy as a result. But as we enter the microscopic world, and as we shrink technology, especially down to a size of a single particle such as an atom, here we enter a new place, a place governed by bizarre quantum physics, and a place that has its own rules that scientists have only started to explore extremely recently. And some of these rules seem to be extraordinary. And so in some of the recent studies, by exploiting some of these hidden connections between particles, scientists realized that, theoretically, a lot of microscopic engines might actually be able to bend these classical laws and overcome the Carnot limit, extending their efficiencies and basically violating the rules of classical thermodynamics, achieving efficiencies that were previously impossible. And so here we have this new proposition of the idea known as quantum thermodynamics. And so let's discuss this new study and all of this research in just a little bit more detail. But in order to understand all of this, we do have to go back in time by maybe 200 years or so to the early 19th century France. And specifically this book by Sadie Carnot, who's imaged in some of these really beautiful paintings that are apparently in someone's private collection. And so technically this is sort of the father of heat engine. But in case you're not familiar with heat engines, it's essentially summarized in this picture. It's any system designed to convert thermal energy or heat into useful mechanical work. And obviously today we use them for practically everything, from cars to power plants to literally almost every device that involves pistons and some kind of an energy conversion. And so in 1824, a French physicist and a military engineer named Nicolas Léonard Sadi Carnot finally formalized the limits of these machines. And so his work, known as the Carnot's Theorem or Carnot's Law, is something that stems from the second law of thermodynamics. He basically realized that for any engine to produce work, it must operate between two specific environments, a hot source or a hot thermal reservoir, and a cold sink or a cold thermal reservoir. With the law stating two critical points. First, no heat engine can ever be more efficient than a theoretical perfect reversible engine operating between these two temperatures. And the maximum theoretical efficiency depends only on the absolute temperature of both the hot and cold reservoirs. So mathematically this would be 1 minus T cold divided by T hot, which will never be 1 and will always result in less than 100% efficiency. And that's because the cold temperature can never be absolute zero and the fraction always has to be greater than zero. So you always lose a little bit of heat to this cold sink. So by design the waste heat is unavoidable. And so technically the Carnot theorem states that 100% efficiency is fundamentally impossible. With the principle applying to literally every large machine we have, every power plant, every car, everything that has pistons converting energy. And so far this is obviously not bizarre, this is classical physics, and all of this has been known for over 200 years. But now we enter the nanoscale world, the world of atomic engines. And that's where Carnot might actually find himself a little bit confused. Because suddenly things don't really make as much sense. Now actually before all of this started and before we had physical experiments, even the famous Richard Feynman pondered what would actually happen if we created some kind of an atomic piston or atomic heat engine, and obviously wondered if it's even possible to build them. So basically here, if we scale down an engine, and if we turn it miniature, what exactly is it going to do, and more importantly, Will classical thermodynamics still apply? And obviously here in the microscopic world there are a lot of additional features. For example when dealing with these small systems we also have this idea of thermal fluctuation or random jostling that starts to additionally provide a lot of energy. And so because of a lot of additional motion that produces additional energy, this eventually led to the development of a framework referred to as stochastic thermodynamics, something that tries to take the motion of particles into account. But something else was discovered in early 2010s 
when trying to create physical experiments using individual particles. Here researchers began succeeding in building physical engines at this microscopic scale, with one of the first attempts being in 2011, with the scientists from Max Planck Institute creating the world's smallest steam engine using just a single atom. But one of the more important experiments took place in 2016. Here the researchers built what they call the world's smallest heat engine. This was reported in the study you can find in the description. But essentially here Professor Eric Lutz, who we'll discuss a little bit later because he basically has done it again, reduced the essential parts of the engine down to the ultimate limit, a single atom. And so by using a single electrically charged calcium ion, specifically calcium-40, trapped inside the electromagnetic device, they were able to recreate the idea behind heat engine. And to create the cold reservoir, they used laser cooling, dropping the temperature to a few microkelvin. But then to create the hot reservoir, they shook the ion with the electric field, which increased its kinetic energy by a few millikelvin. And so the process of heating and cooling caused this atom to oscillate back and forth, just like a piston inside the heat engine. And so this oscillation was then used to store mechanical energy, acting like a tiny flywheel. And this was a huge experiment, and essentially a very important proof of concept. With a single atom achieving the output of approximately 3 times 10 to the power of minus 22 watts, but a very very low efficiency of 0.3%. And so you're not going to be powering anything with this anytime soon, but it was still kind of interesting. Interestingly though, when doing calculations, they also discovered that the power to particle ratio here was technically comparable to a typical car engine. But critically, this also confirmed that the fundamental mechanism for macroscopic heat engines seems to indeed work in the subatomic world as well. So here they proved that we can definitely build these engines, even though we basically know nothing about them. But then we have this next important question. What about the rules? Does it still obey the same rules? And can the rules be broken? And that's because the problem with the Carnot limit when applied to the micro world is that it seems to rely on the fundamental assumptions that the engine and all of its surroundings are completely unrelated and completely disconnected. Which would of course make sense for the macro world that we live in. For large systems, this is a pretty safe assumption. We don't really expect the atoms inside the heat engine to somehow become connected to atoms somewhere else. But things become a little bit different in the microscopic world. Because here the world of quantum mechanics can take over. And this brings us to the next concept that's super important and was recently confirmed, known as quantum correlations. A very important concept described in 1967 paper that though might be difficult to understand mathematically, in simple terms, basically produces a kind of a special link or a special bond between particles at the atomic scale. And so here these links mean that the state of a single particle is directly tied to the state of another particle, even if they're not directly interacting. And so in the quantum realm, the engine and the hot cold bath can technically become entangled. They can start interacting and influencing each other in a way that should be impossible for the macro world. Now in standard thermodynamics and in the world we live in, all of these correlations are completely ignored. But turns out that if you do factor them in, they actually present us with a very unusual hidden source of energy. Energy that in theory can be extracted and used. And that was the focus of the most recent and most significant discovery from 2025. Once again, Professor Eric Lutz, along with Dr. Milton Aguilar, discovered something super cool. First of all here, they were able to discover new laws of thermodynamics for these tiny correlated quantum machines. With the laws in this case showing us that thermal machines operating at the atomic scale can convert not only heat, but also quantum correlations into physical work. And this seems to happen in two different ways. First case is referred to as the thermal case. The usual operation where heat is converted into work just like a standard engine. In this case this would obviously involve some kind of an atom. But then there's also the thermal case where these microscopic engines extract work mostly from the entropic sources such as the system bath correlation or the correlation between the hot and the cold baths and not just the heat itself. And so when running both of these regimes at the same time, scientists predict that it's quite possible to exceed Carnot limit making these engines overall way more efficient. Although in this case, it's not really violating any physical laws because it's just extending some of the laws from the classical world, combining them with the laws from quantum mechanics. And so here the standard Carnot formula actually still holds true, but only for the thermal case. Once you start harnessing these internal quantum bonds, all of these engines will actually get an efficiency boost 
that the classical physics cannot account for. And though this was not physically created yet, right now this was illustrated using a simulation of a quantum engine consisting of two harmonic oscillators coupled to a separate hot and cold reservoirs. And they actually discovered that in this athermal regime, the engine successfully converted these entropic resources, or these correlation resources, into physical work, which did produce efficiency that was larger than calculated Carnot efficiency. And so as you can see from this graph, the efficiency was just a little bit higher. Not by much, but enough to make a difference. And so why is any of this important? And what exactly does all of this mean? Well, first of all, this research dramatically deepens our knowledge of the physical laws governing the atomic world. And that's because classical thermodynamics was mostly found on the average motion of particles, ignoring their individual interactions. But now we do have tools to describe energy conversion down to individual particles that may be entangled or correlated in some other way. So essentially this opens the door to new theoretical propositions. But at the same time, this also potentially has some kind of a practical application as well. Now we obviously have no idea where this could be used. This research is still in its infancy, but it does have a lot of practical possibilities. So some kind of a single atom engine for maybe some kind of a nanobot, or possibly the creation of a very efficient quantum motor that may be able to power something. With the first obvious proposition being maybe some kind of a future medical nanobot. So essentially these tiny robots operating inside the human body that, though still very hypothetical, may one day exist. Or maybe machines that process materials on the atomic scale that require extreme precision and minimal energy waste. I mean, we're still probably decades away from any of this being possible, but this could definitely be the first step. Because this is essentially a miniaturized piston or a miniaturized heat engine. But the fundamental insight here is of course the fact that we don't really need to use heat to produce energy. When it comes to these particles, heat is not the only available source. And so in extremely cold conditions, a lot of quantum effects like coherent superposition and correlation can also be exploited for energy and for increased efficiency. But there is a new challenge. The new challenge is maintaining this efficiency. Or basically discovering how to sustain this a-thermal regime, because in a lot of these early simulations, this quantum engine's efficiency boost was temporary and would eventually stop working. And so future work in this case may focus on some kind of a entropic tank, kind of like the cold tank or cold sink, that might actually allow for this to become more efficient and more permanent. And so despite this being very theoretical at least for now, it's still a pretty exciting discovery because it essentially shows us that in theory, it may one day become possible to create something super, super small, operating on a very similar principle to a typical car, but actually producing additional energy that's impossible outside of the quantum world. And so here the rules of thermodynamics we thought were unbreakable and applied to the entire universe seem to change just a little bit and become more complex once we enter the microscopic world. With all of these new discoveries basically taking us approximately 200 years after that book by Sadie Carnot. And though the ideas from his book define the industrial age, with pretty much everything around us today operating using these thermodynamic principles, technically now we're entering the quantum age. With a lot of these new discoveries expanding the classical laws and showing us that things that we thought were impossible definitely seem to work for individual particles. But at least for now, that's all I wanted to mention. We actually had quite a lot of quantum discoveries this year alone, and quite a lot of them were quite mind-blowing and groundbreaking. You can learn more about this in some of the videos in the description. Anyway, let me know what you think about this and drop your thoughts in the comments below. And so until we discover something else or until future studies, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out all of the studies and the links in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining channel membership that grants you early access and a few secret videos. Additionally, you can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.